All right, let's do this thing. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about how to completely overcome the spirit of worry. Now, before I start, I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer. And I want to thank the Father. I want to thank you, Lord, for this day. I want to thank you, Lord, for this day before Thanksgiving. Lord, praise you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I just want to thank you for this time. Lord, we just praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord, that we serve a God that can make the impossible possible. Lord, we pray that your will is done and not our own, Father God, here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we just pray that you will give us this day our daily bread. Give us, Lord all of our daily provision. Everyone that, that watches this video that's attached to us here uh, at the Empowerment Center, our pastors and ministry leaders, Father God, I just pray the Lord you will just bless everyone with their daily bread. Pray that you will forgive us of our sins as we forgive all of those who sin against us, Lord, for sins that are known or even unknown. Doesn't matter. And Lord, I pray that you will keep us from temptation and Lord, deliver us from the evil one. Thank you, Father God. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray right now, Father God, this is this is a time where this is such a, a timely word because how to overcome worry, I'm going to tell you, I, I had a conversation with the Lord uh, the other day. I was driving in my truck, and as I'm driving along, um, he just starts speaking to me about how to take authority and dominion over your imagination. And he, he, he spoke to me and he said, if you focus on having the heart of Christ, that you can completely take authority and complete dominion over your imagination. And I want to be really, I, I, you know, I didn't even think I was having an issue with worry. And more than that, just completely blew the lid off my understanding of where worry even originates and comes from. It provided me an incredible amount of understanding and it's gonna provide you as a listener with the ability to overcome all of the worry that's going on right now. So you have to realize something. You have to understand that it is physically impossible. Think about this for a moment. Think about worry, okay? It's without imagination, it's impossible to even have worry. OK, you, you, you can't have outside, you can't have worry outside of using your imagination. You have to use your imagination, what's inside your heart. That's the power of creation that is inside you. It's so powerful that God says that out of your mouth speaks life and death. OK, that's why he says that in, in Matthew, that, that I tell you truthfully, if you lust in your heart, <laughs> it's using your imagination that you are just as guilty as if you committed adultery. Like the, the act, the physical act is, 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 is just as equally guilty as using the engine of creation that's inside of you. So imagination can be used for either good things or it can be used for bad things. For bad things, that is worry. Because right now, this world has a love problem, okay? This world has a love problem everywhere. Look at what's taking place from Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, you know, I, I, look, look, at, look, at, look at the fear and the worry, okay? They say that there is racism that's involved, that that's injustice. Folks, that's a love problem. Okay, that's what you see there is an absence of love. Okay, because love is patient, love is kind, love is forgiving. It keeps no records of wrongs. It always hopes, it always trusts, it always perseveres, it always protects. Okay, and the fruit of, of, of the spirit is, is love, joy, peace forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things? It says there is no law. See, 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 there's a love problem right now. And so you have a combination in this world, saints, of a lot of things happening at once. You've got riots taking place in multiple parts of the United States, in multiple cities throughout the United States. You have a movement uh, of folks that are deeply concerned about pretty much the everything related to our government, all three branches of the government. 
Uh, they're very deeply concerned that we're in a constitutional crisis right now, uh, and that's growing more and more evident every single solitary day. You've got folks that are very concerned about world affairs, such as uh, Russia and the United States going to war with one another, or uh, a stock market crash, or Ebola, or now there's a bubonic plague in West Africa. Okay, there's just like a whole world of just, it seems like mess that's out there. And it seems like it's it, like it's terrible. Like like this is just wow. We really need to worry. And if you're not worrying, you are just like certifiably crazy. No, folks, this is the time where not only you don't have to worry. This is the time that the Lord wanted us to shine our lights the brightest. See, love was your greatest gift. That's the greatest gift that God had ever given you. Your greatest gift wasn't just uh, uh, what, what it describes in 1 Corinthians 12 of just all, one of those specific gifts of prophecy or wisdom or knowledge or any of those one, you know, one itemized gift. Okay, no, your greatest gift was love. In fact, love was the nexus of all those spiritual gifts. So let me tell you something. You can't use, you can't have worry in your heart without using your imagination. So as soon as that frequency, as soon as you feel like your mind is starting to go to a place of worry, you immediately need to focus on love. You need to focus on every single attribute of love. I want you to meditate. Use your imagination. I want you to completely take dominion over your imagination. And I want you to meditate on you and that love coming together and what is the most powerful way that you can bear the fruit of love. I want you to focus on joy. I want you to meditate on peace. I want you to meditate on forbearance. I want you to meditate on kindness. I want you to meditate on goodness. I want you to meditate on faithfulness. What does it mean to be faithful? Well, first off, to get a word of faith, you have to hear. Because remember that faith only comes by hearing, right? So we know that faith only comes by hearing. So then you have to be faithful. So, so, so now we're talking about being a practicing Christian. Instead of just saying that we're a Christian, we're practicing. So you are now setting your mind on things above. You are talking about meditating on gentleness, and self-control. Meditate on self-control. Because right now, this world, it needs a whole lot of self-control. It needs a lot of gentleness and compassion and love for one another. Look at what we've done to ourselves. We've entrapped ourselves. And you know where all this stemmed from? All this stemmed because the church lost its voice back in 1969 when they, when they implemented 501c3. It's when it all started. It started a chain of events when law, when, when the church could no longer speak, when it could no longer raise up those godly voices, those men of righteousness that would make righteous laws. Okay, well, then you get, just started getting a bunch of people that were wicked that did nothing but create wicked laws. And that's why, as of today, you know, we got more laws. We got laws now that, that literally can strip a person of their citizenship. They're actually, lawmakers are entertaining laws on stripping citizens of their citizenship if they say something that might be construed as threatening to the government. That's not liberty. Guys, this isn't liberty. And so we have to set our hearts. It's that moment where we have to let our light of love shine the brightest. And so right now, if you in remotely any way, shape, or form feel worry in any way, shape, or form, I want you to immediately begin meditating. I want you, if you're in a place where you can shut your eyes and you can concentrate for a moment, I just want you just to imagine that love. I, you know, this is for me. I'm not going to say this can be for you. You can use your imagination your own way. That's the great part about imagination in the heart. You can just do that. But for me, I, 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 try, to, I try to meditate and I focus on this ball of light in front of me, like this ball of light, like this, 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 this light, the light of Christ. It's just absolute love. And, and, and this light is just shining bright. 
And it's kind of like, you know how the sun, the, the sunlight gives off a visible light spectrum. It has red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, right? And it has these different spectrums. In fact, we even in science use these spectrums. Well, this, the, 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 this, there's a spectrum of light that comes out from this light that's right here in front of me. And, and this light, it's shining in its spectrum of light is all of the gifts of the spirit. It's every gift in its perfect measure. And so, and, 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 and this thing, as it's beaming out, all you feel is nothing but love and joy and peace and forbearance and kindness and goodness. It, it, it strengthens me to, to have faithfulness. It gives me gentleness and self-control. It lets me know that, that, that there's no condemnation for anything, if, as long as I walk in it, even, even if I screw up, and I know I'll screw up, but my heart's pointed in that direction, there's no condemnation, because, because everything I'm doing is done out of a heart of love, and for that, you can't be condemned, and, and as, as, as I focus on that light, it, it radiates faith, and I, and I ask the Lord, I ask, him. I, I, I asked to have conversations with him and, and there might be moments where I need him to increase my faith. And I hear, and when I hear, I hear clearly it, it's, it's, and, and you need to hear clearly, like, like there's not like God, when he speaks, he doesn't feel like, like, you don't come away from the conversation saying to yourself, when I speak to God, he, I don't come walking away and saying, you know, I feel like God was telling me this. No, like there's no question when God speaks, he speaks with authority, with godly authority, with kingdom authority. When he speaks, it's, it's in the form of a command authority, like, 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 Lord, should I watch this movie on Netflix? No. Okay. Well, see, there's, I don't have to debate that. I don't have to like go back and question, you know, well, what did he really mean when he said no, you know, uh, you got it. And, and so, so when the Lord speaks, he speaks with a command authority. And, and so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, increase my faith, increase my faith so that I can have supernatural wisdom to avoid the pitfalls that are before me, that Lord, you will show me through love. The father God, as my, I increase my capacity to love, you will increase my capacity to receive the gift of knowledge so that Lord, you will show me the intentions of in the hearts of men and women far in advance so that I can know how to navigate my life or Lord, I know exactly how you want your deliverance through love to come about for that person, whether that be through prayer and meditation or whether that be speaking directly to that person about something extremely intimate that's in their heart that they need deliverance ministry over through this love. I ask for the, the, the increase, like I said, in the gift of faith, that it will increase my faith. I, I, I ask, Lord, through, through, so that I can hear, Lord. So you got to understand something, folks. When you ask for an increase in the gift of faith, you're asking to, you're, what you're asking for is you're asking to have a conversation with the Lord. That's what you're doing. You're asking to have a conversation with the Creator. That, so, and, and when you ask Him, when you when you ask him to have a conversation and you're curious, you're genuinely curious, and I mean curious like a little child, like 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 you just are full of wonder and you want to know. Um, God will tell you anything. I can personally testify to this that God will not. God, there's only been two things ever that God has ever withheld from me, but God will grant you understanding. There's, he will grant you understanding to whatever measure of love that you have. He's going to grant you that. Just also, when you ask for the gifting of love, if you ever ask for the increase in the gifting of love, it's very important that you have a lot of patience and that you've learned to have a lot of patience. Because if you don't have a lot of patience, then that increased level of understanding 
can inadvertently cause you a great deal of frustration. So we want to avoid that. And, and so before you ask for understanding, ask the Lord to increase your capacity to love and focus all of your attention on having patience. And that means you actually have to be patient with folks. So like when you say, yeah, I got to be patient. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're in a position where there might be something that's inconvenient, like an autistic child that's at a store and he starts screaming and, and you like lose it and you get upset and you start mumbling underneath your breath about the parent. We'll see that's, that's the kind of situations folks, they need to be patient in, right? When we see our brother or our sister doing something wrong or something that's, that's, or, or something that's on TV, a lawmaker that's doing something that, that they're not supposed to, and it's a reflection of everything that we've done, we need to be patient and we need to let God do his, do his assignment. He, need, he needs to be allowed the opportunity to work out what he's working out so that he can get the glory through time. So patient, you gotta, when you get pray for understanding, you got to pray for patience. So through love, you're going to be given all the measure of the gifts, healing, uh, uh, miracles, signs, wonders, prophecy, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do is we're going to break down every single one of those gifts. And we're going to explain them to you how every single solitary one of those giftings uh, is being used right now in your life on a day-to-day -day basis and you never even knew you were even using it to help you identify it because all of those giftings are going to go back to love. They all are generated through Christ's love that's inside you. And so when you begin to worry, I want you to begin to focus and meditate on that love. And I want you to focus on that uh, and meditate on that love and how you are going to start showing that love based upon the fruit and the gifts of the spirit that are already inside you. Where is the best place for that fruit to go? What's the best environment? Where is God leading you? Getting the word on where God is leading you and exactly how to take authority over any obstacle when you begin walking out that faith walk and that assignment and, and in such a manner that you have absolutely no worry whatsoever. And folks, we have enough testimony to tell you exactly how to do this because we walk things out on faith and as we walk things out on faith miracles signs and wonders abound everywhere every pastor that's with us at the empowerment center all has um, uh, a testimony to uh, the gifts of the spirit and miracle signs and wonders being displayed in their ministries as they walk along in their faith walk. So trust me when I say this, trust the Holy Spirit. Uh, we know what it's like uh, to be squeezed. We know what it's like to feel worry and how to stand and overcome and then take authority and take over territory in the mighty name of Jesus. So this is how you do it. It's through love. Be prepared for the next video. We're going to go over gifts and talents. Thank you so much. I pray a blessing over you. I pray a blessing and, and I bind any assignment of the enemy that would try to come against you. That would try to take this word from your heart and try to dissuade you from your assignment. I rebuke and bind that spirit in Jesus' name. And the whole host of believers said, amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you guys.